Thursday, just two or three minutes after seven o'clock, actually nearly five past seven. I'm misreading the clock even here, which is a great start, isn't it? It means Talking Sport on uh, Talking Sheffield, the name of the programme, Sheffield Live TV, and it means we're on until five to eight with some, uh, hopefully, riveting conversation, despite the nature of the guests this evening. It's some old familiar faces, but I'm sure that they will entertain you. Uh, John Newsom, first of all, friend of the programme, and you can only say things like that to friends of the programme, former Sheffield Wednesday Leeds and Norwich defender. I think I've got the main ones in there. Mike Tuck, it's great to see you. And I think for the third time in the programme, Mike is the skipper, the inspirational, long-serving skipper of Sheffield Sharks basketball team. And Sheffield's very proud of you. You're currently champions, playoff uh, British championship playoff uh, champions having won at the O2 arena back in I think it was May I think when we last spoke to you and a new season is about to begin uh, at the arena on a week on Friday isn't it a week Friday that's right a week Friday so we'll talk to you about that and also familiar face Jonathan Buchan from BBC Radio Sheffield. Uh, Johnny and I were in the wrong place, both of us simultaneously on uh, Tuesday night, weren't <laughs> yeah. we, this week? We, we were at the wrong ground. Wrong ground, wrong the games. Wrong team. We were, unfortunately. Not watching the interesting games, were we? No, we were at Elland Road. We were. Um, Someone had to be. Yeah, somebody had to be. No, I had to be because I was working. <laughs> you didn't have to be. No, I was work. watching on. I was just doing a bit of research, I think you could say. Was that just, right? just right. making sure I knew what was going on in the championship. <laughs> <laughs> I could add to this conversation by starting some rumours. You could. That'd be dangerous. But I won't. But I won't. We, we saw a sort of a grim uh, basement battle mm. uh, which leads squeaked home by two goals just, to yeah. one. While down the road at Hillsborough, John Newsom, I, you were there, weren't you? I was, yes. Yeah. Right. You were watching a five-goal thriller, uh, and it had everything, uh, not just the five goals. Thunderstorm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Even before the game, wet through, trying to get there, lightning, thunderstorm, um, kickoff delayed, um, pitch waterlogged, squeegee in the pitch. <laughs> you know, it was it was mental. And then two 0 down, getting a, a bit of a bit of a telling them really. You know, Bristol did really, 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 really well. Um, we were just speaking earlier, the striker, Abraham, you know, bossed it and scored two good goals. And then all of a sudden, um, we get a man sent off, they get a penalty. You're looking at your watch thinking, I might, 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 you know, get off home early. It's going to be 3-1. I can't see he's yeah. getting back. And crash, bang, wallop, they miss the penalty. They get one sent off. You know, keep the faith, and and they end up nicking one in seven minutes of injury time or something. It was it was mental. Yeah, like mental's the word. Like Johnny, I was catching up with it on Twitter when I finished finally finished all my work at Ellen Road and got back home, and I saw these scenes of celebration. And the only thing that I can think of reminiscent of that late celebration in recent years was that goal against Carlisle in the promotion season mm -hmm. under Dave Jones where Mikhail Antonio scored at a similar point I think deep into stoppage time mm -hmm. a vital win that actually took the Owls above Sheffield United at the same end at the cop end and there was that wild celebration then as well but it really was mm -hmm. something um, it wasn't quite like that at Elland Road, was far it? Far from yeah. it. Far <laughs> from it. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the same atmosphere. I mean, when when Hillsborough gets bouncing on a situation mm -hmm. like that, on an occasion like that, when when the game turns on its head as it does, yeah. then it's an unbelievable atmosphere in there. And I saw the celebrations. A couple of our callers have been on this week saying they were in that group of about 20 people who managed to get onto the field and yeah. celebrate with all the players. And I think that's what they needed. I think that's what Wednesday needed, that bit of unity between everybody to get themselves going this season, really. You never condone it, people coming on, but in the corner, when the players are in the corner, you can understand yeah. it in a situation yeah. like that with the euphoria. Um, could, you, could you see it happening? Could you see the comeback being... You mentioned Tammy Abraham. Uh, you're a centre-half. I, I take it you, you wouldn't have fancied uh, marking him. Different time, isn't it? Different time. Yeah. You know, back in my day, you could yeah, have, you'd have, you could have, <laughs> well, you could have tested his metal. I think is what yeah. uh, what our, our, our coaches used to say. Yeah, um, it was a handful, though. It was a handful. He he bossed Tom Lee's, which you don't say that many many times a season. You know, he's he's been a, a real good centre half for Sheffield when he came down from Leeds, and um, they 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 just did a job. They scored. They they sort of like. They'd done a game game plan. The game plan was right, and they scored a, um, a set piece, and, and they got us a couple of yeah. uh, you know a couple of times, and and we we just looked a, a little bit bit lacking really. I, I, I think I, we're not. It's not clicking at the moment. And then 
And then that second half, kicking towards the cop, um, you know, when, when their man got sent off and they missed the penalty, you could feel the atmosphere just, yeah. just lift a bit. Yeah. Uh, and then we scored, and then Bannon scored a worldly from 30 yards, which, well, you know, the roof came off the it, cop. It was embarrassing for Richard O'Donnell. I really did feel for Richard. He's a good guy. He's a former Sheffield Wednesday player, also a friend of the programme, has been in here. I did... When I saw that, mm. that goal, I felt for him. Well, a couple uh, of people said to me, oh, you know, the keeper should have saved, saved it. But, you know, if you listen to goalkeepers and goalkeeper coaches now, they talk about how the ball moves and, you know, yeah. that ball must have moved. I mean, it, he fired that in. It was yeah. it was some strike. And, yeah. and I'd love to see from behind the goal or something, but I bet that ball moved it probably all over did. the place. And that's, that's kind of being kind, but also it could be the reality. Right. Yes, reality. We'll, we'll talk more, Owls, more about that game. Also talk both Barnsley and Blades uh, with uh, Johnny, who's seen, I've seen Blades two or three times. Johnny, mm. I've not seen Barnsley, I'll have the pleasure on Saturday, you've seen them. Have you? And that's, they're se making sensational progress in the championship, so I'll have that chat. But let's, um, let's, let's bring Mike in, because we were talking about needing a big, strong player the other night, and you are six foot six, perhaps, or... Six foot seven. Six foot seven. <laughs> uh, Can you head it? And, <laughs> Can you head and, and you are six Can foot two it? over there, yeah, John? Mm, six three and a bit, I think. Six three and a bit, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I might be six, drinking now, Alan, but... Six <laughs> three and a bit, six seven, six foot just exactly. And, and the reason you're sitting over there <laughs> is because you want to look very good. No, there. I'm six foot, and I don't think I would ever have been the shortest person on a sofa before. But if I was sat on there tonight, I certainly would have been. I'd look tiny. You would have. So then, Mike, how many seasons now at, uh, at Sheffield Sharks for you? I've been here seven seasons, so just going into my eighth season. Six so. foot seven, seven seasons. Yeah. All adding up. And, of course, you've, you've had fantastic success there. Yeah. And, and you come in. And the great thing is that the team that you beat, uh, Leicester, at the O2 Arena to win that player final, they're, they're your first opponents. Yeah. Uh, could, you couldn't have wrote it better. It's like a storybook style. Um, yeah, so we, we saw them in May at the playoff final at the O2. Uh, yeah. We were heavily the underdog of that game and ended up... Uh, coming out on top and, and beating them in that game. So they're definitely going to be fired up to see us in this first match. And this is the English Institute of Sport, uh, mm -hmm. Friday, 23rd of September. So it's a week tomorrow mm -hmm. at 7.30. Do you think on the strength of that that you'll you'll get an increased crowd or on what oh, you yeah, definitely. Get? I definitely think uh, yeah, our, our supporters will be out there in the masses. Um, you know, bo both clubs have, have made a lot of changes throughout the summer, but, uh, you know, it's still, there's still that, that rivalry between Sheffield yeah. and Leicester, so it's, it's going to be a great game. How many players have you signed this summer then, and what, what's the turnover <sighs> been like? We've, well, we have uh, three new American imports, and then another American who has a Lithuanian passport. Yeah. So, and then we've brought back a former Shark who was in London last year. So we probably have five, six changes right. throughout the summer. So, yeah, a completely new new Sharks team for us this year so it's is that been... normal because wouldn't you have wanted to Atiba Lions the coach wouldn't he have wanted to have kept the nucleus of what he had the successful team well I think that's one of the uh the give and takes with success is that you know guys are guys want bigger contracts and and then also other teams come in and, and try and try and poach them so uh it would have been nice to get some of those guys back I, yeah, I would have yeah. certainly liked it it would have been great to build off that su success that we had with them but it's just the nature of the business uh, in our league most guys sign one-year contracts, you know, two-year, three-year contracts are very rare. So, one-year contract and then and then on to the next club for just, most guys. Uh, because of your success, they just simply had better offers, did they? Yeah. Uh, one, I'm not sure where all of them gone, but I know one of the guys is now in France. Right. Playing for a decent side. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things with success, you know. Uh, yeah. it's, but nobody poached you. No, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cornerstone here. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> you're stuck with me. You're immovable. No, but they, they know that they can't get you. That's what you're trying to say. That's it. it Teams I'm could not afford you. Sheffield's adopted son right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the way you are staying. You've been the mainstay. But how well, Atiba Lyons, you won't believe this. I mean, I don't know how many years. He's been manager for year, coach, that is, mm. for years and years. You never get that in football, that kind of continuity. Mm. And how it pays off, because he just assembles a new team every, every year. And it's always competitive. Yeah, basically, we had we had a run for probably about four years where we had a, a good core group of guys, but then it kind of, you know, we'd bring in a couple new in here and there. But now we've kind of broken up, and we're starting all over again this season. But we we started preseason about a week or two early this year, and I'm really happy about how everything's coming along right now and how the team's really mm -hmm. coming together. 
Um, I think Atiba's done a great job in the offseason of uh, putting together a, a decent side, and I'm really looking forward to this first game, our first test. Yeah, OK, we'll talk more with uh, Mike about that later and how the team is constantly changing. Sheffield Wednesday have kept, uh, John, everybody that they wanted to keep. Uh, there was very little going out the door, and they brought a lot of players in during the summer. But the feedback I got, not having seen the Owls since the opening week or two of the, uh, of the season, is that there's a lot to pick from in midfield. And mm -hmm. the other night, uh, an observation, say, from my son, OK, he's my eyes and ears at times, he went to the game and he said it papered over a, a few cracks, really, Dad, because the first half performance was poor. And he reckoned it was significant. And looking at it from the outside, I agree with him, that they ended up in the second half with pretty much the midfield that was very successful last season. Wallace on one side and Forestieri kind of on the other mm -hmm. and, and Bannon and Lee. So where's it going from, from, from that point of view, do you think? I, th I think it's a very, very valid point, Alan. Um, you look at... You look at the back of the program, and, yeah. and it's, it's embarrassing, really, that you know Bristol City have got 23, 24 players, and Sheffield Wednesday it's nearly off of the page. You, you've got to turn right. over the page. You've got that many. There's that many pros down there. Yeah. You know, you, you're looking at 40 odd professionals, um, and I think that we have signed good players, but I don't think we've de we've necessarily strengthened the areas that we possibly needed to strengthen. Um, Which is, for you, you know, I, I, I think we needed a. We needed strengthen at centre off. I think we needed strengthen at full backs. Um, you know, I think Hunt's been great. Um, Padil has not really been at the level that he was last mm. year. But of course, there's um, a Manuelson there now to compete with him. But uh, you know, we, we've we've so we've we've gradually like brought people in. But I think he's also seemed to like chop and change with the shape and. The, my, my biggest concern has, has been, having watched every home game this season, has, has been that um, we don't play with much width. And I think in the second half uh, against Bristol, we, we did end up with, a, with basically a four in the midfield and we did have some width. Mm. And we tried to get around the back of them and we, and we, we found them wanting a little bit. But mm. we seem very what, narrow what, and very you, compact. Yeah, what do you think? So I heard Carlos vehemently defending the number of players that he had and saying, yeah. no, we haven't got too big a squad, we've got two players for each position. How do you say he's got lots of midfield options and it seems to me that Abdi's a bit of been a, a misfit so far and you've got David Jones that he's yeah. trying to integrate? Uh, yeah, I, I think the same. I, I agree with John that they need to probably yeah. improve in the fullback positions. I think you make an interesting <laughs> point about them not being as wide as they were at times last season. I think that's because mm. the fullbacks last season were so key to what they did. Yeah, yeah. And mm. I think towards the end of last season, Hull City and on the playoff final in particular, found them out and realised yeah. if you stop the fullbacks pushing on, mm. then you stop one of the major attacking threats f from Sheffield Wednesday because they are quite narrow without them. And I think a lot of teams have seen that and this season tried to do that to them, some of them successfully, some of them unsuccessfully. So I think that width is a big factor of it. They can't do any more business now, can they? So they're, they're kind of stuck with a lot that they have right now. I think the players that they've managed to keep a hold of is a big factor. We know about the Forestieri Airy situation. I don't yeah, think that helped the, no, the unity no. at the club I, in yeah, recent times. I, I, exactly was going to be my next question about unity. Mm. I wrote a column about this today that I, I feel Carlos has done, uh, Cavalli has done well in terms of facing down a player like that mm -hmm. and the whole club, but also so apparently now reintegrating him into a group that must have been highly resentful. But I, I, have they reintegrated him? He scored a goal. There was a communal celebration, but he got the winner last Saturday. Is there any lingering resentment? What do you think first, John? Johnny? I don't know whether there's resentment there, but I think it's one of the factors you'll have with success in the same way what Mike was just talking about. If you're successful, then you suddenly have players who are, in terms of football, attracting other clubs and are able to come and knock on the door and ask for a bit more money. And they signed Stephen Fletcher on a lot of money over the summer. We know that Gary Hooper came in last season on a lot of money yeah. and they'll have brought in Abdi on a decent amount of money as well. And you can understand why maybe some players who were already at the club could go and knock on the door and say, where's my share of, of this newfound wealth that he's been put into the club? And yet, collectively, he still gets great fine backs yeah. and responses in three successive yeah. games. So yeah. that would tell you that the togetherness is there, John. Yeah, I think it is. But oh. um, I think the, the episode with Forestieri, as a, as a dressing room, um, it's quite insulting. It's quite insulting mm. if, a, if a player puts, puts on Twitter whether he did or not, you know, um, you know, I'm going to leave, or I, I'm, I'm refusing to play. Mm. You know, yeah. to refuse to play, to refuse to do your job, is if you know, if I'm in that team, you, you know, I'm taking that as a bit of an insult, a personal insult, mm. and I think everybody in that dressing room will 
dressing room would. So to forgive him if he if he comes in and apologises, you shake your hand and yeah, you know, let's put it to one side. And but it, it takes time, doesn't it? Mm. It takes time for you know if somebody does something wrong and they say sorry. Yeah, you, you accept their apology, but you've still always got that little bit of a lingering doubt for yeah. maybe a couple of weeks. And and I think he's not been the same player. Right. I think he's he's missed a few chances which. Last season, he may well have put in, or you know, his confidence might. Even if he's five percent less, we, you know, yeah. we were talking about confidence earlier. Five percent is, 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 you know, it's small margins in in Championship football and Premier League football, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Major challenge for know, the head coach to control that situation. You know, he's big on togetherness, isn't he? He's massively. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and quite rightly so. You know. uh, and just, just like you know, I mean, for him not to play on Tuesday night, you know, there was mm. rumours that oh, he'd taken a knock, but. He came on with five minutes to go in in the first half, and he didn't look like he'd taken a knock somewhere. You know, no. he, he 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 run himself, you know, put himself yeah. around really well on the second half, and and and, and did a good job. And and so was that another part of, you know, you're still not too big to drop, and and and, and his man management and a message. To, yeah, you know, he seems you know, to. But have hopefully, that. he's going to react in the right way. Of you know, I'm going to show you that yeah. I am. You know, integral part of the team. I am number one, and you, you've got yeah. to pick me. Or, you know, like a lot of them, did he throw the dummy out of the pram? No. Uh, well, he got the winning goal um, last Saturday, mm. home match, and uh, Barry Bannon. I don't, I, I don't go big on tweets from players, but I quoted it today because he said, "Fantastic to get a winning goal from the main man today." So he's calling in the main man, which suggests to me mm. that as a team, a team player there in Barry Bannon saying. Hey, you're back in the fold, yeah. mate. Well, he, he is the main man, isn't he? Let's, let's yes. be honest, Fernando yeah, Forestieri is the player in that side who can do things that yeah. other players in that side can't. And he so can be the one that creates that moment of magic that yeah. we saw many times last season, earn them points, and this season now proving to be the same despite what we've, what yeah. we've seen off of him. What, what do you think Mike Tuck is a, a great team man and a, a captain when you hear this kind of thing going on in, in football? What do yeah, you, it's what do interesting because it's not something that you'd really see in, in basketball. Um, but I think uh, you can't let uh, something like this, these off-the-court issues, off-the-field issues, affect you as a team. Um, mm -hmm. But I think with Forestieri, you can see that it's not really affecting him. He's still he's still scoring yeah. goals. They're, his teammates are still showing love and 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 respecting him. So I think it, it might be more something between management and him and upper management and him that that they need mm. to sort out. I think they have. I think it was between him and the chairman initially. Mm -hmm. sort, of, sort of said. And I was quite pleased to hear today. Was it in the interview in the Sheffield Star? It, it is quite clear that he hasn't got this new contract that was talked mm. about. I would have been really disappointed had privately somehow either been rewarded mm -hmm. you know for that tactic so it's good good that he's still having to produce to get the contract he, he wants, still right? didn't answer the questions though did it the courts I, th there are still so many lingering questions yeah. over what actually happened and, and why it actually happened there was rumors that he nearly didn't play in the game before the one that he refused yes. to travel for he yeah, said he the, didn't travel for villa personal game, reasons yeah. the villa game yeah there, were, there was talk that he nearly didn't play in that one had to be persuaded to yes. play in that game and then the following game he doesn't go and play he says it's for personal reasons the club say he refused to travel yeah, there's so many questions around yeah. it and I just wanted to hear a bit more from him when yeah. he did actually finally come out and say anything. Whether we'll ever hear well, that as a maybe, matter. Maybe within time and, and once it's all been put to bed and you know yeah, in yeah. a couple of months it may come out mm. mate, you know and they'll, they'll put the you know be honest and put the cards on the table but yeah. I also think it's um, credit to, to to the chair Mr Chancery that maybe his, his naivety of have never been involved in football I think yeah. most most Chairman with it long in the tooth would have thought, well, here we go again, I've seen this before. Right, we better in. you know, yeah. we better put a for sale sign and yeah. on his back and cash him in and it's a great point. And, and the fact that he he thought, you know, I'm I'm not having this. We don't do this in my yeah. business or in my country or I'm standing firm and, and no, it, it was just a refreshing yeah. change, wasn't it? It was a very refreshing change. And and thank you so much, chaps, for a riveting first half. Stay around for the second half. We haven't taught Blades or Barnsley. But we will definitely discuss both of those in depth in the second half when James Gregg joins us with a whole variety uh, of sports events uh, to report. Johnny will be here. John Newsom will be here. Mike Tuck will be here. You're going to be there, I think. See you then in five.